Hello. Negative feedbacks are found almost everywhere in analog design. These are found in voltage multipliers, LDOs and voltage regulators, in various amplifier applications, PLLs, noise shaping data converters, switching mode power supplies, and in countless other circuits. As a matter of fact, if you want to be a competent analog design engineer, then you need to develop a sound understanding of negative feedback systems. Notwithstanding the wonderful properties of negative feedback, negative feedback systems are prone to become unstable. And that is why ensuring the stability of negative feedback system or so-called frequency compensation is one of the most important aspect of designing negative feedback systems. This video will try to explain the basic concepts and terminology related to frequency compensation or loop stability. We will also try to develop an intuitive feel of the subject using graphical tools. In order to explain the properties of negative feedback system, it is often represented in the form of a block diagram like this. Here X is the input of the system and Y is the output. AOL is open loop forward gain and it is a frequency dependent quantity. In its most used form, AOL has very high values at low frequencies. Beta is the feedback factor. In most explanation, beta is supposed to be frequency independent quantity. Although this video will also assume beta to be frequency independent, but keep in mind that this may not be true. One such obvious example is active integrator circuit. Here feedback network is made of capacitor and resistor, which is obviously frequency dependent. Coming back to our frequency independent beta, its value is between 0 and 1. This circle over here is summer elements and the minus sign here is what makes this feedback negative. Assuming forward gain and feedback factor to be unidirectional, we can easily calculate the transfer function of this system. By using the simple algebra, we arrive at the desired transfer function equation. This is one of the most important equation in whole of the analog design. Let's look at this equation in some more details. Numerator of this equation is simply forward gain of the loop. Denominator contains the term beta AOL, which is simply the forward gain multiplied by the feedback factor. This factor is known as open loop gain or simply loop gain. In a typical negative feedback system, loop gain is also many orders of magnitude higher than unity. So we can ignore the factor of 1 in the denominator and simplify this equation further. And overall transfer function simplifies to just the inverse of feedback factor. And this just is the ideal behavior a negative feedback system strives to achieve. This equation implies that the input is approximately equal to output multiplied by the feedback factor. Notice in the block diagram that the feedback quantity is also equal to output multiplied by the feedback factor. And this is no coincidence. As a matter of fact, any functional negative feedback system will force the feedback quantity to be equal to the input. And that also implies making error term, which is input to the forward loop gain, zero. And this behavior is also worth remembering by heart. We will next move to clarify the terms closed loop and open loop. These terms closed loop and open loop often appear in relation to the negative feedback systems. And it is often confusing especially to the beginners, which is referred when. Closed loop is similar to the system in the real life. For example, if you have a chip in the lab and you are measuring the transient performance, you are measuring closed loop response. On the other hand, open loop is an artificial construct to assist the design process. For any design, both closed loop and open loop are uniquely related to each other because both are describing the same system. Both closed loop and open loop responses can be used to analyze the stability of a system. But using open loop response has certain advantages over using closed loop response. Using open loop response gives more intuition about the cause of instability and hence the chance to fix it. At the same time, the open loop analysis gives a better measure of degree of stability in terms of phase margin and gain margin. But it doesn't mean that closed loop analysis is not used at all. There are good chances that you already know that poles in right half S plane means unstable system. In fact, here we are referring to the closed loop poles. 
Poles in open loop transfer functions are almost never found in right half plane. You may have seen in your control class this kind of relation between pole location and transient response. Pole location in this analysis are in fact closed loop poles. So when you hear of damping factor or natural frequency, for example in a second order system, we are referring to closed loop response. Also the root locus plots often used in control systems for stability analysis describe the movement of closed loop poles. In fact the initial location of poles describes the pole location in absence of feedback. So in a way these are the open loop poles. But apart from these initial location other locations are really closed loop poles. Next we will define the term stability. There are in fact several ways to define system stability ranging from very simple ways to very complex ways. In most of the engineering applications, however, the stability is defined in the sense of bounded input bounded output. In the simpler term, this means that if a system always produces a finite output and responds to a finite input, then it is stable. There are many methods to determine system stability. Each of these methods have their own advantages. But by far, the most used method in analog design is Bode diagram. Although it is highly recommended to verify the stability using transient simulations as well. Next, we'll look at Bode diagram in more details. Bode plot refers to gain and phase plot of transfer function with respect to frequency. Frequency is in log scale. Gain is plotted in dBs and phase in degrees. As such, body plots are continuous plots without sudden bends and jumps. But in most of the pen and paper analysis, we use what is known as asymptotic body plots. In asymptotic body plot, a pole or zero causes a sudden bend of 20 dB per decade in the gain plot and a 90 degree phase shift in the phase plot over two decades of frequencies. Body plots are not specific to open loop transfer functions. We can draw body plots for any types of transfer functions. Next, we will consider the body plot of one pole systems. Although you will rarely encounter a truly one pole systems, many stable systems resemble a one pole system for a wide frequency range. And also, it serves as a good candidate to introduce the body plots. We will use OPAM based voltage multiplier circuit as our representative negative feedback system. We will also assume that the register used for the feedback is actually potentiometer which we can slide up and down to increase or decrease the feedback. The gain of one pole amplifier can be written like this. Here AOL represents low frequency gain of the amplifier which is usually a large number and omega zero OL represents the bandwidth. The body plot of amplifier gain will look something like this. The three important property of this plot are low frequency gain, bandwidth or minus 3 dB frequency and unity gain frequency. The unity gain frequency or the transition frequency is the frequency where gain reduces to 0 dB or 1. The slope of the gain after the 3 dB frequency or so called roll off is minus 20 dB per decade. The minus 20 dB gain reduction means reduction of gain by 10 times. Per decade frequency increase indicates 10 time increase in the frequency. This roll off is also represented by minus 6 dB per octave. Here minus 6 dB indicates gain reduced to the half and in an octave interval frequency doubles. If we multiply the low frequency gain by its bandwidth then this product is known as gain bandwidth product. As we discussed earlier that for a minus 20 dB per decade roll off if frequency is increased by 10 times then gain reduces by 10 times. What this implies is along this minus 20 dB per decade roll off line the gain bandwidth product remains constant. And this means that the transition frequency or the unity gain frequency is simply equal to gain bandwidth product for first order system. In fact for higher order system the ratio of unity gain frequency to gain bandwidth product 
is an important indication of the stability of the system. Coming to our feedback network, the amount of feedback is simply voltage across resistor R2 and it can be calculated using simple voltage divider rule. Notice that being a simple resistor divider, this feedback factor is largely frequency independent. And being the ratio of two similar component, this ratio can be designed to be very accurate. In fact, these are the two most important requirements for the feedback factor. The minimum value of feedback factor can be zero when R2 is zero or this tap is at its lowest point. This condition also represents an open loop system. We cannot draw the value of zero feedback factor on this Bode plot because zero in dB is minus infinity. The maximum value of feedback factor can be one when R1 is zero and this tap is at its highest point or directly connected to the output. Beta of the value 1 in Bode plot will simply overlap the 0 dB line. Any intermediate value of beta can be drawn as horizontal line below 0 dB line. The loop gain is a product of forward gain, which in this case is simply the amplifier gain and the feedback factor. When converted into dBs for the purpose of Bode plots, loop gain is simply sum of the open loop gain and the feedback factor. For the case of 0 beta, or open loop system, the loop gain is also zero and cannot be drawn on the Bode plot. For the case of beta value of one or maximum feedback, the loop gain is simply equal to open loop gain and the Bode plot will coincide with this plot. For a better understanding of loop gain plot, let's plot it for an intermediate value of beta. As discussed before, the Bode plot of feedback factor would be simply a horizontal line below the 0 dB line. To obtain the Bode plot of loop gain, we simply sum the red line and the black line. And this means shifting the red line down by this amount. Notice that the bandwidth of loop gain plot is same as bandwidth of forward gain path. Next, we turn our attention to closed loop gain. The closed loop gain is given by this equation. The beta AOL S in the denominator is simply the loop gain. For the purpose of asymptotic Bode plot, we can approximate this equation in two conditions. When loop gain is greater than 1, then we will ignore the term of 1. In this case, the closed loop gain is simply 1 over feedback factor. Now since feedback factor is a frequency independent and accurate quantity, as long as this condition is true, the closed loop gain is also frequency independent and accurate. In our asymptotic Bode plot, this condition is true for the frequency lower than the transition frequency of the loop gain. Inverse of feedback factor in Bode plot is simply negative of the feedback factors in dB. On the other hand, if loop gain is less than unity, then we will ignore loop gain factor in this equation. In this case, the closed loop gain is simply equal to the forward path gain. And as a result, in our Bode plot, it will simply follow the red curve. Notice here that the bandwidth of closed loop gain is same as the unity gain frequency of the loop gain. For the case of minimum beta or zero beta, the closed loop gain will simply be equal to the forward path gain. For the case of maximum feedback or beta of one, the closed loop gain will coincide with zero dB plot till this point and then it will follow the forward gain path. Notice that except the forward gain path, all other three graphs, the beta, the loop gain and the closed loop gain change with the amount of feedback. As we change our feedback from minimum value to maximum value, the beta will start from minus infinity and will eventually end up at zero dB line. Loop gain will also start from minus infinity for no feedback and as we increase the amount of feedback, it will start to increase and for the maximum feedback, it will coincide with the forward loop gain. Closed loop gain, for the case of no feedback system, will start from the forward gain. And from there, it will make its way down to the 0 dB line for the maximum feedback system. The amount of feedback starts to make a difference when it makes the loop gain higher than 1. In other words, it starts to make a difference when the loop gain plot crosses the 0 dB line. Notice here that only if loop gain and beta are known, 
we have all the necessary information to derive the closed loop gain. Body plot in reality is a collection of two plots, the gain plot and the phase plot. So let's turn our attention to the phase plot. A frequency independent beta will always have a zero degree phase. The forward gain with one pole in left half plane will have minus 90 degree phase shift. But unlike a zonotic gain plot which bends suddenly at the pole location, the phase will change over two decades of frequencies. The total phase shift at pole frequency will be minus 45 degree. Coming to the phase plot of loop gain, it will also have total minus 90 degree of phase shift. But while drawing the phase plot of loop gain, we also take the negative sign into the account. And that means the phase plot of loop gain starts at minus 180 degree. Now since minus 180 degree of phase shift is same as plus 180 degree of phase shift, this plot can also be drawn starting from plus 180 degree. The important point to remember here is the direction of phase change. In this case, it will go down. And that brings us to the end of part 1. We haven't considered so far the instability of negative feedback system because a one pole system is always stable. We will begin the next part with the Bode plot of two pole systems and then go on to discuss the stability. I hope you found the content of this video helpful. So share your comments below and thanks for watching.